Cancer is a continuously growing global health problem that poses major challenges, most especially in developing countries. Find out how this international distributor of innovative health products came up with a series of solutions to help increase a patient's chance to survive the odds. In 2020, the Philippines hit a record of 354,398 prevalent cancer cases within a five-year period. But because of poor access to health care, especially for people living below the poverty line, the advances and breakthroughs in cancer remain unattainable to many. Cancer refers to a group of diseases that's characterized actually by cell growth, abnormal cell growth and proliferation, inflammation, as well as angiogenesis or formation of new blood vessels. It always starts with mutation in the genome or the genetic makeup of a person inside the cell. Before PPARS, most of my patients, they were unable to finish the chemotherapy regimens because of the side effects and because of discomfort during the process of chemotherapy. Maria's son, Dominic, was diagnosed with stage 4 rhabdomyosarcoma when he was only 4 years old. While coping with the recovery of her other sick child, Maria found it hard to accept Dominic's condition. It was actually very devastating because with Dominic, it was manifested mga 4 years old, na siya, unlike my daughter. Ko na congenital talaga, baby pa lang. Yung mga bandang September, meron nang umbok-umbok dito sa leeg niya. Hindi ko talaga iniisip na cancer ka agad siya until nag-nosebleed siya. Hi! Dominic was prescribed chemotherapy, but his family insisted to rush to an integrative doctor to seek for alternative cure. Medyo hesitant ako kasi as a mother, I know the side effects ng chemotherapy kasi. So what I did is that I rushed towards the integrative doctor of my daughter who happened to be PPAR partner doctor of Simply Nature. One of the hardest decisions to make for people living with cancer is choosing the kind of treatment that would work best. To help patients and their families deal with this growing health problem, one company commits to producing safe, credible and natural health solutions by drawing on the latest bioscience technology to deliver a series of safe, efficient, and natural products. What is Simply Nature and what does it do? Simply Nature is a company we created and founded about 10 years ago. Our mission is to find effective health solutions for people. So we provide natural products that work in combination with conventional therapy and medicine. As an international company that provides natural solutions for cancer, metabolic syndrome, and degenerative diseases, the management upholds a health philosophy that centers on whole food nutrition as the frontier in health management. When we talk about choosing treatment, especially in the area of cancer, patients are really afraid of chemotherapy because of its side effects, and they tend to then look towards natural products. But this is not a either conventional or natural choice. At Simply Nature, patients can have the best of both worlds. Our protocols work with conventional chemotherapy to minimize its side effects so that they can get the best treatment using both conventional and natural together. Cancer is like a virus. It continuously evolves, it mutates. So it can develop defenses against our usual treatment modalities like chemotherapy. Like I said, chemotherapy and radiation therapy have, have a lot of side effects. So more often than not, patients stop their treatment because of these side effects. It's very important to have the support. With the supplements that we give the patients, there will be lesser side effects. So they will be able to finish their chemotherapy protocols more comfortably. This company introduced PPARS, which is touted as one of the best natural ways of solving serious health problems. PPARS stands for Peroxisome Proliferator Activating Receptors. It's basically a nuclear receptor found inside the cells. Now, when these receptors are activated, the benefit that you can get from that is, number one, cellular differentiation. Number two, it's to promote fatty acid metabolism. If you have better insulin function, 
your blood sugar will naturally go down. And another one is to induce cancer cell death by modulating the immune system. As a sole distributor of PPARS, the company promotes its use to many reputable health institutions worldwide and actively organizes corporate health conferences and public health talks in Asia. Simply Nature PPARS is made out of a special stream of these types of microalgae. It is very effective by protecting the bone marrow. We maintain the integrity of the immune system of the patient, which is very important to prevent infections and to fight off the cancer itself. And also, Simply Nature PPARS is also very dense in nutrients so that the patient can recover faster because of better cellular healing. Sabi ko parang na lead kami to an extraordinary and I must say amazing journey. I'm very proud of him. At a young age, na eight years old, he believed that it's his purpose to siguro encourage other people. Then we would like to really pay it forward with the knowledge that there's really like Simply Nature that can help people with cancer very much. When fighting cancer, living healthy is very important because it allows us to pursue what is important to us in life. And that's what it's all about. When we can help a patient move from being bedridden to getting up, to be lucid in thought so that they can have conversations with their loved ones, it gives the whole process of fighting cancer a whole new meaning. And that is what drives us at Simply Nature. Hello po, ako nga po pala si Ronaline Rosales Batalier, 23 years old at ako po ay taga Bicol, Albay. Uh, Nadiagnose po ako nung taong 2015, which is ito po yung mixed germ cell tumor sa ovary. I stage 1 po ako nung diagnose ako. Tinanggal po agad yung right ovary ko nun. May nakakita sa akin na ano, taga doon sa amin, sabi niya. What if try ko daw sumali ng contest? Tapos hindi ko nga sinabi na may sakit ako eh. Sabi ko, sige baka sakaling kahit pa paano may pandagdag kami sa gasos namin. Then noong 2017 po, yun na po, pabalik-balik yung lagnat ko. Siguro mga 2 weeks hindi ako nawawalan ng lagnat. Tapos yun na, pagpa-check up ko kasi lumaki po yung chan ko. Doon ko po nalaman na yung cancer ko daw, new mirrors to count na siya. Yung sakit sobra pa, yung nararamdaman ko, likod and sa stomach ko. Kino po lumaki po yung chan ko, hirap na hirap pa ako. Nagawa po yung nakalatan na din yung lungs ko. Yung sa liver ko, kaya daw po lumaki yung chan ko, tigawa ng sa liver ko. Hindi na masyado nagpapunction yung mga organ ko sa loob ng chan. Yun po, nirepair na po kami sa child house. And then, dun, nung start na nag-chemo ako, doon na po kami tumira. Na, Nag-stay na po sa child house. Akala ko okay na, hindi na, wala na mangyayaring operasyon ulit. Pero nagulat po ako kasi every month pay check-up na lang po ako. Umuwi lang po ako sa amin tapos nagsusuka na naman ako. Akala ko kung ano na naman po yun. Yung dumi na ilalabas ko sa bibig na. Sabi ko ano na naman to pa. Kaya na naman tayong sisimula na naman tayo. May nakita daw po ulit na bukol sa diaprag. Iyak na iyak na naman po ako. Sabi ko hindi pa nga magaling yung sa ibang organ ko. Tapos ito na naman. Po as of na wala na po akong treatment. And may tumor pa po ako sa diaphragm. And late, lately may nakita na naman daw po sa akin ng gal ng gallstone sa may ano ko, gallbladder ko. Napansin ko po talaga, start po uminom ako nung Simply Nature, which is, which is yung powder and tablet po na pipars. Para pong, pag nakainom ko po siya, before ako mag matulog, pag nakainom po ako, parang na nare-relieve, parang nare-relax po yung katawan ko. Siguro mga two days after na take ko po yung gamot, parang napansin ko na parang everyday na ako nagbabawas. Kasi po talaga dati, siguro sa isang linggo, tatlong beses na po ako nagbabawas. And nakita ko po talaga yung good feedback agad ng gamot na ininom ko. Kasi yun nga po, parang pag nainom ko po siya, parang yung sa loob ko na may something ako naririnig na tumutunod. And after yun po, nagbabawas na po ako. And parang ang gaan po sa pakiramdam. And parang medyo po nabawasan yung bloated ko sa chan. Start po nung uminom po ako. About po dito sa Pepar's powder po, tinitake ko po siya every after meal and based sa protocol ko na ibigay po sa akin ni Doc Jensen, pag morning which is 5 scoop nilalagay po sa ilalim ng dilay, naantayin mo po yun matunaw. Pag gabi naman po tinitake ko siya after dinner which is 4, 4 scoop naman po siya. Kasi sa protocol po is kailangan everyday makatake ako ng 9 scoop. So kapag po based po sa observation ko, kapag po naiinom ko po itong pepars powder Parang yung something na tumutunog po talaga sa chan ko na parang may something, parang kini-cleanse na yung sa loob ng chan ko. And after po nun, magbabawas na. 
So parang after ko pong magbawas noon, parang feeling ko sobrang gaan ng pakaramdam ko sa chat. Tungkol naman po sa PPARS plus tablets naman po, based sa protocol po na ibinigay po sa akin ni Jock Johnson, uh, ano po siya, kailangan everyday makatake po ako ng 30 tablets. So sa protocol po na sinusunod ko, iinumin ko po siya with empty, empty yung stomach ko. Pag morning, pagkagising ko, ito po talaga agad yung iniinom ko. 15 tablets sa morning, and after naman po, same, kailangan empty din yung stomach mo. 15 sa morning, ng pagkagising ko and 15 sa evening after dinner ko before ako mag-sleep. Kasi, yun nga po, mas pinipili ko siya after dinner na lang po siya inumin para po agad. Pag nainom ko po siya, yun nga po, naririnib yung katawan ko parang mabilis po ako nakakatulog and naiiwasan ko po yung insomnia na lagi ko pong na nararanasan nung, noon po, na, lalo lalo na po no after po ako mag So, yun. Daily routine ko, yun, gumigising ko ng umaga for exercise kasi yun din yung advice sa akin ng doktor ko. Kailangan may regular exercise ako and pagkain ng mga masustansya pagkain. And yun nga po, nabanggit ko last time na mahilig talaga ako magluto. Yun po talaga, kapag nakumakain po kami sa office, talagang ako po yung nag, nag luluto po para sa pagkain po namin ng ibang mga kasamahan ko pasyente. As of now, thankful po ako kasi isa po ako sa nakatanggap ng scholarship sa isang magandang universidad dito sa Manila. Uh, isa po sa nag-udyok sa akin para kumuha ako ng kursong education is yung mga bata po na kasamahan ko dito. So, na nakikita ko po yung hirap ng papa ko. So, sinasabi ko sa sarili ko na hindi ako kailangan panginahan ng loob kasi yung papa ko nilalaban niya ako eh. Pero ako that time po kasi naiisip, kapag naiisip ko yung tanim ko, parang ano, ang sakit po, like nakikita ko yung papa ko na lumalaban. Pero yung katawan ko, pakiramdam ko po kasi sumusu ko na kahit yung utak ko, yung puso ko, gusto ko lumaban. Hindi matutumbasan ng pasasalamat yung nagawa sa akin ng papa ko kasi talaga sobrang bait ng papa ko. And nung November po, is nag-city scan po ako, dun ko po nalaman na may nakita daw po sa na bagong tumor po sa akin. So that time, syempre, naisip ko na okay na ako tapos may nakikita na, nakita na naman po ulit na bago. So I am so thankful po kasi nung December po, is nakilala ko po kayo, nakilala ko po sila, Mr. Sean, sila Doc Jansen po, at ang Simply Nature staff po na alam ko pong nakatulong po talaga sa akin. And yun nga po, nung nakita po na parang bad yung result ng CT scan ko, and after po ng December, bali po after December po, and until June, July, bali nakatatlong CT scan po ako. At nakita ko po talaga yung improvement po ng result ng CT scan and ultrasound ko po. And I'm so happy po na nitong latest na CT scan ko nung July, Uh, tuwang-tuwa po si, si Doc Jansen kasi talagang nakita po niya na lumiit po talaga yung tumor ko. And masayang-masaya masayang -masaya po ako doon. Siguro kung wala yung simple nature, siguro uh, yung tumor na nakita po sa akin, I think siguro po mas lalala po siya. Kasi yun nga po ang sabi nila, kapag na-stress yung pasyente, mas lalo po yung nagtitrigger yung cancer po. Kaya yun nga po. Maraming maraming salamat po talaga sa Simple Nature kasi kung hindi po dahil sa inyo, siguro hanggang ngayon stop pa rin po ako sa pag-aaral. Ngayon po, gusto ko lamang po pala ipaabot ang aking pasasalamat kila Doc Johnson and Mr. Sean. Maraming maraming salamat po talaga kasi alam ko po talaga nakatulong po siya sa akin at alam ko pong mas lumakas po ako. And sabi nga po ni, ni Doc Johnson na kahit slowly siya, sure naman po talaga nagagaling po ako. Kaya maraming maraming salamat po sa walang sawang pag-support po sa akin.
And we are live. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jenny Lee Macanjola, a board-certified pharmacist and your health advisor here in Simply Nature. Welcome to another episode powered by SMG or Simply Healed Medical Group. Last week, Thursday, that's March 14, we discussed about... Who can remember? Who among of you attended? Yes, that's right. We discussed about... Fighting Back Against Breast Cancer, Empowerment Through Action, where we discovered the best treatments for the different types of breast cancer. So for those of you who missed it, just replay on our YouTube channel, search for Simply Nature, and don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. After that, last Saturday, March 16, we held a hybrid health seminar in SMX Convention Center entitled Innovative Modalities in Cancer Treatment, Pushing Boundaries for Better Outcomes. And on behalf of both Simply Nature International and Simply Healed Medical Group, I want to extend our sincerest gratitude for your attendance and active participation, both face-to-face on-site and online via live Zoom access. The harmony created by a mix of cancer patients, survivors, advocates, and esteemed experts coming all together to explore the latest advancements in cancer treatment was truly inspiring. Let's watch this recap. Moving on tonight, we are going to not only discover naman the do's and don'ts in managing fourth stage cancer, but also learn how Simply Nature PPARs suppress angiogenesis to prevent metastasis. This is a free webinar, so please tag and share with your family and friends. To give more insights, of course, we have a seasoned international speaker on a wide range of topics from personal success to healthcare, who is also the founding director of Simply Nature International, our PPARS expert from Singapore. You all know him. It's no other than Mr. Shan Lim. Hey, thank you, Jen. I'm so happy to see everyone here tonight. We really had a great time last Saturday. Um, those of you who missed it, you know, it's it was amazing. And those of us, those of you who join us via Zoom, um, thank you. Uh, we had a really good time. Uh, I think Junie is going to prepare some uh, video interviews with some of the attendees. And we really answer some really tough questions. Today, we're talking about managing fourth stage cancer. Uh, during that event, people were asking about what to tell their parents who are in their late 70s uh, fighting cancer. And there was one... Um, participant who had a very heart wrenching decision, and that and we answered her to the best of our ability. It turns out she's actually one of the patients of a one of the most famous oncologists and our friend as well at Simply Nature and Simply Heal, uh, Doctor Inasho. And you know, even after the event, when I was sitting down with uh, Doctor Jimmy Katapia, who is an oncological surgeon, we were still talking about the options for that uh, participant who asked. And I think it, Junie interviewed her, so look forward to it. So again, uh, like our event and same like every Thursday night, uh, it's very exciting. We have an Ask Me Anything segment where you can ask any questions and I can already see questions uh, flooding into the chat group. So we're going to have fun today. But first, uh, let's hear from Dr. Johnson on some strategies and approaches to managing fourth stage cancer. So let me hand the time back to Jen, who will introduce the next segment. Yes, thank you, Sir Sean. We also have Dr. Jansen Kalalan, who graduated from St. Luke's Medical Center, College of Medicine, then was conferred as a diplomat of not only the Philippine College, but also the International Board of Lifestyle Medicine. He is also a medical consultant at SMG or Simply Healed Medical Group and at Alta Integrative Medicine Wellness Complex in Perpetual Health Medical Center, Las Piñas. Let's watch this. What Simply Nature has is uh, PPARS agonist. So, um, PPARS are nuclear receptors, okay? So, when these agonists, when these ligands uh, attaches to that nuclear receptor, uh, genes are activated. When these genes are activated, when these specific PPAR receptors are activated, no, 
they can actually suppress angiogenesis. And specific um, nuclear receptors are PPAR alpha and gamma. So when these are activated, uh, angiogenesis can be inhibited. Go for a consultation, okay? So I can teach you more specifically. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Simply Healed by Simply Nature. Again, we have our regular special guest, Dr. Johnson. Welcome, Dr. Johnson. Yeah, glad to be here again. <laughs> yeah, and today, Dr. Johnson has a very exciting topic for all those of you out there who have loved ones who are suffering from cancer or you yourself are suffering from cancer. You know, Dr. Johnson, one thing I noticed that is very strange and very surprising is that Cancer is such a lethal, uh, dangerous disease, right? Yeah. Once you get cancer, you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid, your family will be afraid. But you know what I noticed? Many people can't tell me how does cancer kill? They don't actually know how, even cancer patients don't know how cancer kills them. They just know that it kills them. And I'm very surprised by the lack of understanding of something that is so scary mm -hmm. and that we spend so much money trying to treat cancer if you have cancer, but you never understood how it worked. Yeah. So how would you know whether your treatment is correct if you don't understand how cancer kills you? Yeah. So uh, I'm very happy today we're going to talk about a topic called angiogenesis. Yeah, that's a huge, big scientific medical word, uh, but it's very important. So to all the listeners out there who are cancer patients or who have family members that are cancer patients, I, I just think it's a great, great uh, blessing that Dr. Johnson is going to share with us and help us understand another aspect of cancer. So Doc, yeah. take it away. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about angiogenesis tonight. No? So angiogenesis is a huge uh, medical term. So what does it literally mean? No? So from angiogenesis has uh, two words going together. So angio, which is blood vessel, and then genesis, which is to create. So angiogenesis is the creation of new blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, what it means. Now, for new blood vessels to, uh, to, to form, no, there's a specific growth factor that the body needs to, to, to secrete uh, around, the, around the, that uh, particular area, area of uh, tissue. So that, that substance or that growth factor is called VEGF or vascular endothelial growth factor. Okay, so... A lot of our treatments, current treatments right now, targets that specific growth factor. Okay, which what, what, is, which, why, why is angiogenesis important to cancer? Yeah, um, angiogenesis is very important for cancer because this is how cancer um, grows and also uh, metastasizes to the other parts of the body. So ah. cancer does not just, the, the cancer cells doesn't just break away, mm. uh, just uh, doesn't break away like a snowball, right? Okay. So it has to grow its roots okay. and the cancer spreads through that roots. Wow. Okay. That's okay? interesting. So that is uh, how angiogenesis uh, forms. Do I have yeah. a question. If, if a cancer tumor doesn't spread, if it just stays where it is, uh, does that mean, is that less dangerous? Can a cancer patient survive like for the rest of their life? I mean, if you're 70 years old and you have uh, colon cancer, mm. if it doesn't spread, that, will it kill you? Or, um, mm. There are some nuances to this, no? Mm. Um, the good news is the prognosis is better because the cancer cells doesn't uh, just spread to other parts of the body. So we have certain conditions for this, spe uh, specifically mm -hmm. uh, ovarian tumors or ovar uh, ovarian masses, okay, or ovarian new growths, okay. So these ovarian new growths can grow as big as a basketball. Wow! I have seen those. I have assisted in surgeries. Uh, as uh, as uh, women, wow, that's huge. Looking pregnant, and then once we uh, open them up, it's a tumor. Wow. inside their stomach. Once wow. we remove that tumor, that tumor weighs around the 10 kilos. Wow, can, that's You can amazing. just imagine 10 kilos. You okay. can imagine how much blood vessels need to be grown yeah. to, feed, yeah. to, feed to feed that, that. tumor to yeah. be that size. You can just imagine. And wow. then, of course, that person really feels uh, very uncomfortable because he, that lady is carrying that amount of weight for a very long period of time. No, So, um, these tumors, of course, has its own danger because, number one, uh, it can cause um, torsion, 
Okay, so the the tumor can twist around itself. Then it the the tumor can can die. Then you will you that tumor can be become infected. Then you can die of sepsis. Okay, so ah. that tumor can also um inter interrupt with your bowels. Okay, it may it can make you uh move your bowel more difficult. Okay, it can also interact with your your uh um uh, urination. Okay, so it can make you um urinate more often and feel. Uh, that you are about to urinate more frequently. Okay, right. so those are just some of the side effects of that. Of course, it can also um, impede blood flow. Mm. So that is going to be much more dangerous if it impedes a main artery. No, so it can actually cut off the the blood supply to some part of your body. So actually, yeah. cancer kill uh cancer kills a patient by literally interfering with the physical operation yeah. of your body. Basically, with the anatomy. Mm, okay, so right. uh, for these tumors that grow really uh, big, uh, these tumors usually doesn't uh, just um, uh, separate off with the main tumor. So that's what makes it uh, treatable because mm. it can easily be removed surgically, and you have a good prognosis. Once the tumor is gone, then you can live. Okay, but um, for malignant tumors, it that's what makes it more difficult to treat because you don't see the the microscopic cells, the microscopic cancer cells. You cannot see them in imaging studies because they are so small that it cannot be detected by the machine. Okay, so that is why we have systemic chemotherapies to eradicate all of the cancer cells. Mm. Yeah. All right, Doc. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> Let's go back to okay. your your. Let's go plan. back to angiogenesis. Okay. Yeah. So angiogenesis is uh, how tumors um, grow. Mm. So a normal cell becomes a cancer cell. Okay, through mutation. Then this cancer cell divides. It evades immunity. Okay, so it evades your immune system that cannot be detected by Im your immune system. Okay, and then it has to grow. For it to grow, it needs to have nutrition. It needs to have oxygen. There will come a time that when that this tumor cannot grow anymore because uh, the amount of nutrient and oxygen and oxygen that it requires is already very high. So when the time comes, when this point comes, then the tumor has to grow its own blood supply for it to sustain its growth. Mm. Okay, so remember, you can just imagine this tumor is a very active, uh, rapidly replicating uh, entity. So it has to have a high... Uh, amount of uh, metabolic uh, it has a high metabolic uh, capacity or potential so this is hyper metabolic okay so for that to happen it has to have its own blood, blood supply. supply okay so um, usually usually uh, two mores cannot grow beyond two millimeters without its dedicated blood supply so you can oh. just imagine so, two so, millimeters so if you have a two centimeter tumor it already has its yes. own blood supply yes in fact two uh, in fact um, in uh, cancer staging, two millimeters is usually the cut off for uh, increasing the staging from a uh, very from from stage zero or stage one to the, stage, stage to the, the next stage. Mm. Okay, but um, another magic number is uh, two centimeters and four centimeters. Usually, these uh, these numbers are what separates the the the. Previous the, staging to the, the next staging, staging the different cancer. stagings. All right. Okay, so it has something to do with uh, angiogenesis. And um, uh, the last stage of tumor development is literally cancer. Okay, so cancer starts when cancer cells penetrate the basement membrane. Okay, so again, uh, it would need uh, a supply of nutrients and a waste disposal system. In, in order to do this, the cancer has to go to, to generate angiogenic growth factors. And uh, when the blood supply is established, the tumor would now be able to metastasize okay. wow so so once they has it has their own blood vessel mm. they now have access to your bloodstream the, your bloodstream yeah. your bloodstream now it, it's um, like the tumor creates its own skyway yeah to connect to edsa yeah it's uh literally act, it acts like a <laughs> parasite you know uh, you, it acts like a parasite literally so i, I hope this is helping mm. uh everyone those who have cancer to, to better understand what's happening in your body. Now, he, here's how it kills you. Okay. Now, you already have a growing cancer. Now, it already has a dedicated blood supply. Okay. Now, uh, a portion of that tumor um, uh, uh, gets dislodged, enters your, blood, enters your bloodstream, then it gets thrown to some part of your body. 
you now have stage four breast. You, you now have stage four cancer because yes. because there's metastasis already. Wow. Okay. So um, when this metastasizes, again, this tumor implants to to that uh, to that tissue, and then it again uh, it again Gross. spreads. It, it 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 again grows, invades your uh, the tissue matrix, then produces its own blood supply again. Now, when di- when when this does that. Of course, the bad that tumor that is is it supposed to be there? Mm. So our body treats it as a foreign object, mm. a space occupying lesion, mm. so to speak. Okay. Mm. So when that happens, our body's reaction is to have inflammation uh, over that area. So mm. when our body have um, hyper inflammatory uh, hyper inflammatory reaction, then that is when you. Uh, begin to experience the symptoms of uh, and, and when you have a hyperinflammation uh, in the area, it's easier to create more new blood vessels. Is, is that is that, would that? Yeah, because uh, if you have a very high uh, inflammation inside your body, then uh, free radicals will just shoot up. When free radicals shoot up, a lot of your tissue will be um, will be injured. Okay, this forms edema around that tumor. Mm. When edema forms, then again, um, uh, the space occupying lesion will, will increase in size. Then you feel uh, pain because uh, the, uh, when that mass uh, interacts with, uh, with the nerve, ah, presses the pinches, nerve. presses the nerve, then that's you the will pain. feel a lot of pain. Oh, that's that why the is, pain is from, from cancer. Wow. That is really very painful. So, so just to summarize this part, I love this because it's happening here in Philippines because we built a new yeah. connection of Skyway from uh, mm. SLX to NLX, yeah. right? So basically what happens is that, you know, your tumor builds its own Skyway to access ETSA and then it throws a car. Gosh. Right, and the car goes down the skyway, goes yeah. on the ad side, and ends up in QC. Yeah. You know, from Alabang suddenly is in QC. So mm-hmm. that's exactly how your cancer spreads. It creates yeah. its own expressways. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Mm-hmm. So Doc, thank you for sharing uh, about angiogenesis. I, you know, uh, and I, I like the skyway thing. You know, mm-hmm. and that's how it spreads. Mm-hmm. So right now, now we know that angiogenesis or the creation of blood vessels is very important to the growth of a cancer tumor. How does this understanding help our listeners out there fight cancer? Does this give us a strategy uh, is, uh, to better understand what kind of protocols we should do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because um, now we know that uh, angiogenesis is very is central to the progression of cancer. Now, we have uh, our own protocols to fight uh, angiogenesis. So currently, what we have are pharmaceuticals. Uh, natural products and food. Okay, so first I will discuss the pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmaceuticals. So our pharmaceuticals that uh, we have uh, right now are Bevacizumab, Axitinib, um, Evero- Everolimus, Lenbatinib, Ramucirumab, Sunitinib. So these are monoclonal antibodies and the uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor. So these are very essential. Uh, this is this is an essential part of your protocol. So this okay? is what an oncologist would be yes. prescribing to them. These person. are what oncologists will be prescribing to you, All and right. this is, these are very important. Now you know but, why the oncologist mm-hmm. is prescribing these to you to stop yeah. the growth of blood vessels that yeah. feed your tumor. Yeah. Now, um, given this, I know these drugs are crazy expensive. Now it is also important that you also do your part. So I have here. Uh, some anti-angiogenic foods that you can eat. Okay, so just uh, take a picture or get a screenshot of this uh, table. Mm. Um, go buy these foods, eat these foods because these foods have been proven uh, in the laboratory that uh, it can actually inhibit angiogenesis. What is the most common food that they can get here in the Philippines? Oh, okay. Um, we have here bok choy. Oh, bok choy. <laughs> bok choy. So those of you do that Chinese yeah. food, there you go. Yeah. Bok choy is good for you. Um, spices, uh, we have garlic, we have ginger, we have green tea, we have uh, mushrooms, we have olives, onions. So these uh, are these vegetables are really common here in the Philippines. We have, we have spinach, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, uh, turmeric, black pepper, 
you know, these are... Uh, wow, these are actually are really not only common, yeah. they're actually delicious. <laughs> I think that's uh, mm. great news to cancer patients. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, it's very, also very important for you to not eat foods that promote cancer growth. Okay, so these foods are usually of animal origin. So it's very important for you not to eat pro-androgenic foods no so this is not something that can be can balance out of course also you can't say because i eat a lot of onions i can eat some can eat steak. yeah 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 all it right doesn't work that way okay so you're all just right. uh, going around in circles okay so it doesn't work that way it's very important that you that you adhere in a strict uh strict uh diet Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So we're going for the last, uh, last part. Mm. So we also have these peepers agonists, no? Okay. Which, uh, sim, which, which is what I love with Simply Nature's uh, <laughs> protocol. So, uh, what Simply Nature has is actually uh, uh, made out of uh, microalgae. So it's not synthetic. It's made from real food, whole food. Okay. So th there's nothing pharmaceutical about this. This is this was not altered in any way. So this is as natural as it can get, no. But of course, uh, the the pollutants uh, have been removed already. Okay. Um, so um, what Simply Nature has is uh, PPARS agonist. So um, PPARS is actually um, uh, nuclear receptor uh, uh, are nuclear receptors. Okay. So when these agonists, when these ligands uh, attaches to that nuclear receptor. Uh, genes are activated. Mm. So when when these genes are activated, when these specific PPAR receptors are activated, no, they can actually suppress androgenesis. And specific um, nuclear receptors are PPAR alpha and gamma. So when these are activated, uh, androgenesis can be inhibited. But uh, of course, the question is the dosing. <laughs> okay, the dose has to be high. Okay, for it, for we. For, in order for us to get some substantial effects, okay. So, so that's the that's the difference. Uh, live a healthy lifestyle so that your body works uh, in the right direction as yeah. your treatment. Yeah. But for the treatment, you've got to have uh, well, I guess the word is uh, not your natural dosing. Mm. You, you even if you want to eat strawberries, which is good for esophagus cancer, it's mm -hmm. not one or two strawberries. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's quite a lot of. I think at least twenty, uh, if I'm not more than more 20. than that. More, more, more. So, so same, right? Uh, natural therapy works, but you gotta have a high dose, and that's where taking our extracts makes it easier, so that yeah. you don't have to eat so much uh, el uh, microalgae, right? Yeah. So, uh, and uh, doc also today. You know, Doc, I, I really appreciate it that you always give us the pharmaceutical, the food, and then uh, the supplement. Mm. Because I, I honestly believe it's not one or the other. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's not. We are know? treating cancer, so we have to use all of our yeah, as I can say. Yeah, right? if this gives you 5% more chance, this gives you another 10, this gives you 20. You add it all together, know, right? you get a better chance of surviving yeah. cancer. Significantly more chance. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely, for all our listeners out there, uh, I'm definitely for, if we can treat cancer totally naturally, that will always be mm. ideal, right? Yeah. Nobody loves to go to the hospital. But I, I always appreciate that Dr. Johnson shares a complete view. So uh, there is always a need, especially if you're on stage four, to understand that drugs and the hospital, the oncologist, are our friends. Even mm -hmm. if you are a total natural uh, advocate, doctors are still your friends. Uh, in in yeah. terms of crisis, fourth stage aggressive cancer, you know, uh, you you're gonna need uh, all the all the best tools available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you absolutely. Can. Okay. All right. So Great. thank you, everybody. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye.
there we have it. So at this point, questions are very much welcome. Just type them down in the comment section below. Kahit Tagalog, okay lang po. But just before we go to our AMA or Ask Me Anything portion, keep the questions coming in because I just want to greet our avid viewers, Miss Helen Camunayan from Baguio, Amelia Rivera, Florence Davao, Glenn Strigala, oh, from SMX. Hi, ma'am. Sorry, Delina Dorupan. And webinar is not the same without you. I would also like to greet our new viewers, Arlene Limpo, Janice Perez Dow, Delia Lorenzo, Mary Jane Alonzo, and Cyril from Cotabato. Okay, now to answer all your questions in this modern world filled with noise of different health opinions. Only trust the ones from the experts, Maya Colon, Mr. Shan Lim, and Dr. Jansen Kalalan. Hello, Sir Shan. Hi, Doc. Good evening. Hi, Doc. Dogs, Hi, so hello, Jen. Yeah, happy to be here. So good to see you too. <laughs> yeah, we had such a good time on Saturday. I, I still remember that really tough question from the. Uh, oh yeah, I remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was a question, you know, for the audience. It was a question where 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 you really, if you turn to the left or right, it's um it's not a good uh place, right? Um, there was this particular uh participant who was sharing with us, she was undergoing uh, chemotherapy and the chemotherapy was damaging her kidneys. And if she were to continue to use it, it was almost certain her kidney will go into complications and most likely start to fail and she'll need dialysis. But at the same time, it was also very apparent that if she stopped her chemotherapy, that would also mean the, um, things will come to a rapid escalation as well. So, Dr. Jimmy, uh, no, Dr. Johnson, I know you didn't know, but later, me and Dr. Jimmy were still talking about this case. <laughs> oh, yeah. What did you talk about? What did you talk about? Because you were saying, you know, if, uh, if both of you were her primary doctors, it would have been so easy to answer because the textbook provided you a textbook answer. Continue the chemo. <laughs> uh, yes. It's a very straightforward answer, right? But because both of you were not the primary doctors, you were you were able to step aside and not just sit in that doctor position, you know, and and it was difficult to answer. It was really difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's really difficult. Yeah, because uh, on one hand you're going to, you know, um, you would have to treat the cancer, but if you treat the cancer with chemo, you risk damaging the kidneys, and the patient is, has already a declining kidney function. So. Uh, at that point, it's really very, very difficult to be honest. Yeah. yeah. But I believe the, the patient, the participant actually shared later that she got, she was, she got the, she got a good answer from the three of us. Um, and she finally, she decided, you know, to create her own options. I think uh, tonight's yeah. topic about how to manage fourth stage cancer, that's a really, uh, I think it's a good place to start. So in the end, the three of, the three panelists from different disciplines, from a surgeon to a doctor to a, a product specialist like myself, we we advised her that, you know what? You don't have to settle for the this or that answer. So we, we encouraged her to create her own option. So she was going to start on a protocol to strengthen her kidney, strengthen her liver, and change the constitution of her current physical body so that there will be more options. And even if she were to use chemotherapy, there will be a better chance that uh, the kidneys will not suffer any more damage. So I think this is a very that this is a very good case where sometimes we are, if we are not careful, we accidentally, especially when we are in fourth stage, we accidentally think that we, we only have two options, right? Left or right. You know, however, there is a third option. You can create your own path forward. I know. So that is actually what the participant decided to do. And uh, we're going to do that through PIPA Pro calls and also with the support of our, our doctors. So we'll keep everybody informed. We're all believing together with her, right? So uh, that's what we're gonna, all going to talk about tonight, how to manage uh, for stage cancer. So Jen, here we go. Dr. Jansen is ready to answer the questions. <laughs> yes, I can see a lot of questions coming up and thrown privately. So let us start the live AMA or Ask Me Anything portion. First question coming from Miss Ness A. Nesro. The PPARS powder that is put under the tongue 
uh, should be wait to dissolve for 20 seconds. Okay, is it okay to drink water afterwards to digest? Uh, okay, you don't need the water to digest because whatever saliva you have, uh, it's, it's fine. Okay, and normally uh, when I put under the tongue, it's more than 20 seconds. I just let it naturally go in. Okay, for many people, I'm one of those people where if I have something under my tongue, uh, my, my mouth goes dry. It's like I, I don't salivate as much uh, when, when the powder is under my tongue. So I will sip. I will sip a little bit of uh, water to moisturize my, my mouth and also allow some water to sit under my tongue. Or else I'll feel very dry and I may end up coughing. Okay, that, this is for me. And I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, it's, it's just the way the reflexes in our mouth works, right? If you have something under the tongue, for some people, they salivate a, little, a lot more. For me, I become dry. So yes, you can take little sips of water, but uh, don't drink half a cup of water. You know, you sort of defeat the purpose of putting it under your tongue, right? You want it to, as much of it to go sublingual directly into your blood vessels uh, under your tongue to be absorbed straight into your body instead of going through your digestive tract, all right? Uh, so I think that, that's the answer. The answer is no. You can sip water, don't drink a lot, all right? Just to moisten and allow the powder to keep dissolving and going down. Okay, thank you, Sir Sean. Next question coming from LEG Natividad. Doctor, how to access... For my wife who was operated with sarcoma because there is a lymph node that grow on the neck part and on the scalp. I we already bought P parts, but it's already finished. Please help us. Yeah, um okay, at this point I have to see you. Okay. Um don't start with the I I have to know what P par product you you have, okay? But you can you can start already with the P parts that you bought, okay? But um it's not going to be enough. I have to see you. Okay. I think that's the answer. So, you know, uh, the next time, we're going to have a next face-to-face. -face, so, please, uh, as many of you that can make it, please make it. It's really a, a great time of interaction. Uh, we actually have people who came from the first uh, October event and they came second time last Saturday. So, uh, for this particular listener, uh, viewer, please make an arrangement to meet with Dr. Johnson. Um, the reason why we don't give specific advice uh, online like this is because we really need to know your condition, your specific condition. Okay. Uh, what we can do on, on a program like this is give advice that most people in your condition uh, will, will, will be able to take. But for specific advice, please make a consult with Dr. Jensen. Yes. And for those of you who wish to have a consult with Dr. Jensen Kalalan, the link to schedule an appointment is in the description box and comment section below. Our pretty healthcare specialist, Beth, will reach out to you shortly. Next question coming from Mary Jane Alonzo. Is chronic cholecystitis is a cancer? It's not. It's not. Uh, cholecystitis, okay, I'm going to... Because the, the illness is in the word, no? So, cholecystitis. Cholecyst is girl gallbladder, okay? So, itis is inflammation. So, cholecystitis is inflammation of your gallbladder. Now, the chronic, the word chronic there is long term. So, it's a long time inflammation of the gallbladder. It's not anywhere near cancer. Okay. But, you know, get yourself treated. So, I just wanted to ask this, huh? because this actually happened to an acquaintance of mine. So, and he, he died rapidly once the onset. He had a liver. It was an inflammation of the liver, right? So I think at that time, it was just inflammation of the liver. That's all they knew. Uh, he refused to operate because he was afraid. Uh, he was like almost late 50s. So he was afraid that an operation will affect the quality of his life. Uh, however, his inflammation actually uh, turned out to become cancerous, that it was actually cancer. And he, he really rapidly deteriorated you know uh, i mean really he really looks like a skeleton when i saw him i thought he was a mummy a mummy you know uh, the pictures so um uh so so yeah i just wanted to uh, i'm just wondering how come an inflammation uh diagnosed originally inflammation but the doctor was concerned and wanted to operate how come it, uh, it actually became uh, like a cancer Yeah, maybe my question is not very specific. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, can you can you uh I'll rephrase, it, I'll rephrase it. So uh, even if it's benign, you know, if our body has anything that has uh inflammation, like in this case, right? Uh can we ignore it or do we really have to do something about it? Well, you have we have to do something about it, no? It's uh, the problem is uh in Western medicine, inflammation uh -huh. is not um, there are medications to address inflammation. However, for chronic low-grade inflammation, we really don't have anything. This is for the Western medicine, though. But for Eastern, okay, we have a lot of supplements to to address that. Okay? Even without using supplements, I mean, just with food, we can lower you can um lower chronic inflammation. But for the liver, if it's acute hepatitis, for example, no. Acute hepatitis can come from um medications. It can because of um uh viruses, no infection. So the root cause still would have to be addressed to and to address the inflammation. But if it's because of the lifestyle of the person, yeah. So the answer there is lifestyle and supplementation. <laughs> yeah, to 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 really reverse it. In fact, for hepatitis, no um fatty liver. Fatty liver disease, so there's some degree of uh, inflammation going on there. The mainstay of treatment for that are supplements. <laughs> yeah, silimarine works well. Um, microalgae, like uh, the nature PPARS, no, it also works well. We have a lot of studies uh, saying so. Uh, um, others also, uh, turmeric is also one. Um, there are many, many others. Green tea is also another um, uh, drink that you can um, take, no? Uh, to address uh, fatty liver disease. Uh, and for inflammation of the liver, say for example, there is an ongoing low-grade um, inflammation. Coffee is also one. I mean, yeah, as long as it's black coffee, you know. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of things that we can uh, do outside of uh, medications to address fatty liver disease. And yeah, really, the mainstay of treatment for that are supplements. <laughs> you know, there's... And of course, uh... yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that, thank you for the answer. I think that, that leads us to this next one by Amelia Rivera. She said, I'm so curious why an oncologist always say, Walang bawal na. Uh, punky gal, everything can be eaten moderately. Uh, is, I hope my Tagalog came across uh, <laughs> relatively okay. <laughs> um, you know, this, this, is a, this is a very loaded uh, question. <laughs> um, we answered this in the panel. We answer this live with three panelists, uh, different disciplines. The answer is, uh, the oncologist number one is not an expert in nutrition, all right. And as Doctor Johnson says, from a conventional Western approach, uh, it seems like if you eat everything in moderation, it's safe, it's okay. Uh, just like Doctor Johnson said, you know, if you have inflammation, there's no drugs, or you're not sick. Uh, but that's not true. Okay, that is absolutely not true. Okay, but it's got to do with a person's uh, specialization. Okay, um, but right now I I'll just let you know. Uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, if you see a Chinese doctor and they have to go through the same rigorous med school, um, uh, is this? I asked a doctor before, a Chinese doctor, have you ever met a healthy patient? The doctor said no, not in their entire life. So why? From a traditional Chinese, from a Chinese medicine approach, everybody is off center. Very few people are completely healthy. They are, uh, they may have certain weaknesses: a, a weak organ, a weak lungs, kidney, a slightly more inflamed. So to 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 Chinese medicine, as long as you're off center, you keep drifting in one direction. So it's for sure it will develop into a sickness, right? So they always try and correct you. And we know this to be absolutely true because uh, another interview with a patient, the patient, it was a question. I don't know whether it was Saturday or not. The patient said, uh, exactly the question you asked, why the oncologist say everything is can eat lung? But the patient said, but deep down in my heart, I know it's not true. Okay, deep down in your heart, you know it's not true. And that is actually, you're correct. Even from a very simple uh, case, when it is winter, you will drink warm, warm foods. You eat certain foods. When it is summer, you take things that are, you won't eat certain foods because that will cause you to 
easily develop a sore throat, uh, a fever, right? And if you are if you are in winter, you won't eat certain fruits, like you won't take lots of popsicles or ice cream because you don't want to catch a cold. So it is not true that you can eat everything, uh, especially when you have cancer. Now, the next thing that I think is very dangerous is the word eaten moderately. This statement, Dr. Johnson, is so dangerous. Because to me, moderately means two bar of chocolate. To my wife, moderately means half a bite of chocolate. The problem is, if a doctor tells you this, uh, for Jen, moderately means half a bag of potato chip. That's moderate because she yeah. normally eats two bags of potato chips, right? So she would say, my doctor say I can eat potato chip moderately. So today, I will only eat half a bag every day. <laughs> By Doc Johnson's uh, reckoning, uh, I remember Doc Johnson, we did an episode called Alcohol. Uh, alcohol. Many people think drinking moderately is one, one, one beer a day. That is moderate. I remember you told me it was one beer a week. <laughs> that was moderate. So that's very different from uh, everybody's definition. So again, um, that statement is not true. To answer your question, why oncologists will always say that it's not their specialty. It's not their specialty, right? If you go and see a physical fitness instructor, he'll tell you, know this, know that, know this. You ask a doctor, the doctor will say, no, you can eat everything, but take a look at the doctor and the physical, uh, the physical uh, sorry, fitness trainer instructor. Who can run five kilometers without panting? Obviously not the doctor. So obviously the physical trainer would have give you better advice on nutrition to keep yourself healthy. All right, so the answer is, uh, it's not their specialty, uh, but it's not saying that they are saying this uh, not from a good place. They're trying to, just share an information uh, to the best of their knowledge. Unfortunately, it is not their specialty. Okay, <laughs> Tom, you want to add yeah. anything? <laughs> uh, actually, what you said is true. Um, I really can't add any more because that's what it, that's how it is in the perspective of a pa of a patient, right? Um, in the in our perspective, I mean, yeah, because they know very. It, well, it's not little, no, about the, it's not really little, but their knowledge about nutrition and our knowledge about nutrition are very different. It's just the way it is. So, um, as a patient, if you will ask them no, about nutrition, the answer would be definitely not going to be, um, how should I say? It's not going to be complete. Okay. So, um, it's, it's the same as, you know, asking a general surgeon. How to deliver a baby. Yeah, the general surgeon would definitely be able to answer you, okay, this is how you deliver. But if you ask an OB, the OB would be able to answer you completely on how you can deliver the baby healthily. Similar, okay? So, um, yeah, it's, it's the, the way, it's how it is, okay? So, um, for nutrition, you would have to ha you would have to ask the right person. Okay. But, you know, there are a lot of patients who knows that deep within their hearts that uh, yeah. they know it's not true. <laughs> they know it's not true. Yeah. So the answer, you already know. <laughs> you already know, right? Because there's so much evidence in your everyday life, right? You, you, are, you feel a flu coming, you went to eat ice cream, you had a cough. <laughs> you, you knew. All these little experiences show you that, no, uh, what you eat does matter. Of course, when you're healthy, it's okay. Your, your, body, your body can take it. But when you're fighting cancer... Uh, leave nothing to chance. All right. Next question. <laughs> okay. Still on gallbladder. Next question coming from Joy Manio. Can PPARs also treat those scenario on gallbladder, those with gallstones, but not cancerous? Thank okay. You. I can answer this one. No, it can't. Okay? Because gallstones are a physical problem. All right. Uh, however, there are alternative methods. I mean, but right now, I think, you know, you can go for ultrasound to use sound waves to break it. Um, the alternative one is, I think for Western alternative is Epsom salt um, and uh, what's that called? Virgin uh, olive oil. For the Chinese, they don't use Epsom salt, but they use another concoction. But both of them causes the, the, gall, the gallbladder to flush up the stones. So uh, my wife actually did that. 
she takes some Chinese powder and then she had to drink one, like a cup of olive oil. It's just, and it's very difficult to drink a cup of oil. Huh? It's pretty disgusting <laughs> when you try to drink it. And uh, but the gallbladder stones uh, were peed out, right? It was the size of my fingernail, my little, my, the, the, my little pinky's fingernail. So you, you can look at those options, but for those of you who are more conventional, go and see a, a, a doctor and they probably recommend ultrasound to, to try and break it. Right, right, doc? Yeah, that's correct. Um, here's how I would treat a person with gallstones. So, so if the patient is presenting with abdominal pain, immediately the solution there is surgery. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Because gallbladder stone is excruciating. Okay, um, gall, uh, gallbladder stone pain, no? And another thing is um, you can develop infection, okay? So it's going to be a very big problem if uh, if you, you know, leave it alone. So surgery is the mainstay to treat uh, gallbladder stone. Um, if in, it's an incidental finding, you had your uh, whole abdomen ultrasound and then there are stones present inside your gallbladder, then we can try to dissolve it medically. Okay, meaning you take medication, you take supplements. So, first thing, what are gallbladder stone? Was it what is it made of? It's made from cholesterol. Okay, super saturated cholesterol. So, um, by super saturated, imagine this, no? Uh, you have your powder juice drink, right? You try to, uh, you, you try to dissolve the powder in a glass of water, but your water is too, it's too few. So you won't be able to dissolve the powder completely. You will have chunks of powder. Okay? Similar thing happens inside your gallbladder. But the cholesterol is the powder juice drink. Okay? So you, if you have too high cholesterol, then it's super saturated. Then you will form gallbladder stones. So what you have to do there is to lower your cholesterol first. Okay? Then you would have to uh, increase the solute. Okay, so um, to increase, so you would have to produce more bile. And some supplements to increase uh, more bile is also deoxycholic acid. It's actually a supplement slash medication. Okay? That's what we give uh, patients to try to dissolve uh, gallbladder stones uh, medically. You take that for six months to one year, then check again if the gallbladder stones decrease in size. Okay, so that's how we do it. Okay, so yeah. So there again, when Doc, when you say you manage your cholesterol, then that's where the PPAR tablets can help you. Yes, so PPARs can still help with gallbladder stones. Just not directly. And, and yes. Doc, I, I enjoyed, on Saturday, we taught the participants how things work. And after that, they started to ask uh, very interesting questions. It was like they, they, they started to experiment about how they will approach uh, treating their own cancer, right? So here is a good example. If you understand how PIPA lowers blood cholesterol, and then when Doc Johnson talks about your gallbladder stones are formed from cholesterol, then you will realize, oh, I can take PIPA tablets to lower my cholesterol. So it will help prevent the gallbladder stones from getting bigger faster, right? Because you lower the cholesterol in your body, it won't, it's made from cholesterol. So less cholesterol, the gallbladder stones won't, won't get bigger so fast, right? So you see, uh, once you understand how the protocols work, you can have confidence that you're doing the right thing. Yes, I guess that answers her follow-up question, which is what are the good supplements for cholesterol, LDL, and okay, fatty liver? There you go. Thanks. The tablets, all right? In fact, yeah. you don't even have to take the capsule or anything. The tablets are really, really just great. Yeah. But if you are really, really serious about cholesterol, then maybe the soft gel capsule, but that, that should be fine. Oh, I, I, I want to answer this one. Maria Siliska Sevilla asked, can PPARs be used for pediatric uh, patients with cancer? The answer is absolutely so. Yes and yes and yes. This is this is very close to my heart. Uh, this is how Miss Sheila, our, our other host for this program, uh, came into my life. She carried her, her husband carried her son at that time was four years old, uh, stage three, stage four borderline nasal pharyngeal cancer pushing back into his brain so uh he then went uh, he then took liquid PPARs and went for his chemo and uh he is well doing well today six years already so he's totally recovered past his five-year mark and 
we sponsor Child House, which is a, which is a children cancer halfway home. So definitely, yes, it can be used for children. It's, in fact, it's very good. And, you know, children actually go through a lot more radiation and chemotherapy than adults. And Dr. Johnson has explained this on his program many times. It's because your children, uh, your child is growing. So the whole body is full of hormones and nutrients that help it grow. And unfortunately, it also helps the cancer grow. That's why children end up going um, through a lot more chemotherapy and radiation therapy. So they need things like Simply Nature Liquid PFARs to protect them so that they don't damage uh, their body. Because you know, the child is very young. Uh, if you are 60, 70 years old, you only have 10 years, 15 years ahead of you to take care of your body. But for a child, it's 60, 70 years. So we, you definitely want to protect your child as much as possible when they are undergoing uh, chemotherapy and radiation therapy, right? Or any other oncological processes. So Maria, the answer is yes and yes. I would do. I do ask you to talk to Dr. Johnson because Dr. Johnson is very familiar or I guess he has many patients. He has patients. Uh, his youngest one is I think six months, doc. Maybe Jian was one year, less than a year. Uh, or was it one year old? She was uh, 36 months. 36 months. Oh, sorry. 36 that's, months. That's three, that's, uh, 36 months. Wait. Eh, was it 36 months? No, I no, no. Slightly younger than that. Slightly younger. 10 Maybe. months. Oh, when 10 she months. She was 10 months PFARs. then. Oh my gosh. It, she was 10 oh, months then. But now yeah, she's already that. three years old. My now she's yeah, already yeah. three years old. Yes, oh. I, I just remembered 36 months is three years old. Three years already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 10 months, 10 years months. Years. That's the first time I saw her. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So Maria, you can be confident. Uh, Doc Johnson has had patients who are very young also. So the good thing about Doc Johnson is that he will explore all options. So you can continue with your pediatric oncologist, <clears throat> just like Sheila, our regular our other host for our program tonight, right? Mm. Okay, next question from Zen Vicente. Is adenocarcinoma cervix stage 3 C2 treatable? Yes, it can be treated. It can be treated. No, it's just that uh it can be quite difficult. Uh, you have we have to use multiple modalities to treat that. Of course, um, uh, that would still be chemotherapy, radiation therapy. It's a partner for cervical cancer. It's always together, no chemo and radiation. Um, aside from that, of course, we would have to treat you, uh, with other things as well, no to mitigate the side effects of chemo and radiation. Uh, so some I have a patient actually who has cervical cancer. Uh, I treated her with PPARS and uh, IV vitamin C. Okay, and uh, a few days ago she reported severe abdominal pain and she she had this a big clump of uh, tissue which she expelled through her vagina. Then after she expelled that abdominal pain went away. Uh, since then, she didn't have any bleeding. Um, she didn't have any vaginal bleeding already. But prior to that, she has um spotting. Okay, although it's minimal, but but she has spotting. But now she doesn't have it already. So um, good news. I am, as uh, I am optimistic that uh the result will come out uh positive, no, in our next scan. But currently, she's still undergoing people. Wow, you know, uh, Doc, there are many, <laughs> many uh, patients who come and share with us uh, literally things that normally, I guess, uh, in conventional medicine will be scary. Like, for example, you cough out something. <laughs> uh, but actually, it's it's good, right? Um, they expelled um, whatever was inside, you know. I, I almost wanted to say they coughed out their cancer or they, they peed out their cancer. Uh, not It's not the cancer tumor that came out, but, you know, it's a lot of things that are still stuck in your system. Um, it's it's out. And, and that goes to show your body actually has this ability to heal and to throw out what is what shouldn't be inside. So this is another well, wonderful, wonderful progression in your patient. And I hope that's encouraging to the rest of us. Yeah. Yes, congratulations, Paul. Next question coming from Mar Elish Kiel. Is it okay to take PPAR tablets, 10 tablets a day for perimenopause? Oh, yeah. Actually, you're taking 
Too little. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say the same thing. But uh, I also want to know your symptoms, what your symptoms are. But if you don't have any symptoms, I mean, 10 would probably be okay if you are in that age, no? But uh, you, you're not feeling anything. You're just concerned about your health. Probably it's fine. But if you are feeling some things, um, 20 would be the way to go. Okay, so uh, here, here's my uh, very clear dosaging uh, instructions, all right? For anything therapeutic, you start at 20 micro tablets a day. Okay, for anything that you want for therapeutic. That includes you feel uh you feel a fever coming, but it's not not here yet. You know, you know it when you're you're about to get sick. Yeah, then you want to take 20, 30, um, you know, to quickly give your body as much ammunition as possible to turn the tide and to fight. So anything therapeutic is 20. Is there too much? No, there isn't. When we did a trial for psoriasis and eczema. Uh, the patients were on mono protocol. It means that they took nothing else but the tablet. And uh, because of that, we, we also took the opportunity to go on heavier dosing. So these are patients who took 60 tablets a day, every day for three months. Uh, wow, their psoriasis and eczema that were hopeless actually reversed, right? So that's just going to show you. My dog is the best example. I have a dog who is commando. I don't know, special forces train. When I was out, my dog took my bag of pee bars. Obviously, sorry, I get my, I don't, my, my pee bars doesn't come in a small bottle. I get mine directly from the factory, right? So it's a bag of 600 tablets. Uh, my dog ate it all in one night. <laughs> yes, very expensive. Lung. I think that's the first thing that most of you are thinking. Okay, he finished 600 tablets, one shot, one night. No problem. And you got to remember the dog is only uh, 11 kilograms and how much, how heavy are you, right? So yes, anything for therapeutic, 20 tablets and above. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, dog. Next question coming from Delia P. Lorenzo. Is metastatic breast cancer curable? It's not. When we're talking, okay, definition, okay, definition. When we're talking about cure, you give a medication, you give a treatment, the disease goes away, it never comes back. That is cure. Okay, example. Uh the cure for uh let me just think something out of my brain. Huh? Uh okay. Uh cure for Ah, cure for allergies. Okay, severe allergic reaction or antihistamine. If you give antihistamine, allergy goes away. It never comes back. Okay, that's cure. Okay, stage four breast cancer cannot do that. It's really, really very, very difficult. Even if you, even if the you, you, there's no evidence, there's no um uh evidence in scans no of uh, the cancer, it can still come back later on. Because it's cancer, okay. Um. So the term, the proper term to use here is remission. Can stage four breast cancer go into remission? Yes. Okay, but the probability is still very small. Okay, it is still very small. Okay. So, um. How? Okay, I'll give you an example. How can a stage four breast cancer patient possibly go into remission? One. The metastas, the site of metastasis should be the liver. Because if it is in the liver, if you resect the liver, you remove the metastasis, you remove the breast, you, the patient undergoes um uh chemotherapy, whatever treatment, no, then it's possible. But if the metastasis is elsewhere, not the liver, very, very difficult to go into remission. Okay. Which is uh, I yeah. I think which is why for all cancer patients, you have to be aware that even when you are declared cancer-free, after you pass the five-year mark, it's you've got to you've got to realize you're gonna make permanent changes to your life. All right, so that you can stay cancer free or undetectable cancer for the rest of your life. On the flip side, you know, um, if your cancer does not progress any further, you will live to your full lifespan what God has given you, okay? So the thing is just, if you're able to manage your cancer to stop it from growing, um, yeah, your life will continue. 
So I hope that gets everyone uh, in the right frame of mind. There is no magic pill. Okay, there's no magic pill to cure cancer. I think that's what Dr. Johnson is trying uh, to impress on everyone tonight. You know, we're all looking for someone to tell us, just take this and it'll be everything will be okay. Uh, it's a very encouraging statement, but it's a statement that is dangerous. Because if you think, my auntie had um, late stage stomach cancer. Uh, she had to go for an operation that was so difficult, no surgeon dared to take it because it might end up dying on the operating table. And for those of you who don't know, when a patient dies on the operating table, the surgeon has to go through a lot of reviews. <laughs> it's not like he can just say, next. Okay, so no surgeon really actually takes on uh, cases that they, they are not confident that they can do well and treat the patient successfully. Okay, so, but anyway, my cousin managed to persuade one of the top, uh, because he himself is a heart surgeon, uh, his classmate who's a top uh, surgeon for uh, GI, to do, to do it. And it was a miracle. The surgery went well, right? The surgery went well. Then my aunt drank eight, one wrong thing for one meal and the whole condition reversed. So I think what Dr. Johnson is trying to impress is that, you know, don't, we shouldn't have been so excited like, oh, I take this thing. They promised me it'll be okay. Then after that, yeah, it's okay. Then we can uh, relax and I can go back to my old lifestyle. No, it, it does. it's not like that. From, from this point onwards, every cancer patient should become more educated about how their body works, what is a healthy lifestyle, what foods can, how they can affect your life, what supplementation should you take, you know, how should you, how should you extend your life and become strong and healthy. I think that must happen for every cancer patient. Yeah. Oh, I just want <laughs> Miss Amelia is being makuli. <laughs> she says, uh, oncologists should try to refer patients to nutritionist or dietitian. Oh no, we're opening a can of worms. Uh, but I want to, I want to make a, Okay, I hope no nutritionist or dietitian gets upset with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, doc, if I say something wrong, please save me. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say this, you know. Nutritionists and dietitians also come from the same school of thought. Uh, most nutrition and dietitians see their profession as a support profession and a very technical one. Right, it's like they study the body needs how much vitamin C, da, 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 da. very technical. Uh, they are also not into their training is also not one of healing and um uh, doc, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. My impression is that they are like uh there's a big difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist. <laughs> And one study how the brain works. The other one studies how you treat a patient with a mental uh, brain disorder. This is, is a very different um, approach. I think a dietitian and nutritionist is more akin to a psychologist. They understand how the body works. They know the exact amount of water you should drink a day. The correct amount of calcium your body should need to go through, uh, for example, uh, to, to function properly. All right, but to use it as an actual treatment, um, yeah, they will give you very technical answers. So honestly, uh, I do think that surprisingly, this I'm very surprised. I do think that integrative doctors are much better positioned, and definitely among medical doctors, lifestyle medicine uh, doctors like Doctor Johnson actually study how to use food and lifestyle, not to be technically correct, the right amount of water. No, they actually study it to make therapeutic uh, effect, healing effect on the body, not to just know how much is needed for functioning. Uh, that's why when you see a, a nutritionist and a dietitian, they are like very uh, technical in their approach, right? Uh, and nowadays, if you use chat GPT, you can probably get the same information because it's a very technical thing. It's a very technical thing. However, for healing, it's, it's different. All right, so again, uh, my you are very makulit, so today I'm equally makulit. Huh? The oncologist should not refer you to dietitian and nutritionist. They should refer you to a lifestyle medicine doctor. <laughs> like Dr. Johnson. Okay, I'm being makulit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, um, 
there are on post actually just to answer the the just to reply to the comment no there are on who refer their patients to nutritionists uh, dietitians of course no and um they're valuable uh, actually in the in the healthcare yes. system because yes. i mean just one consult with your nutritionist dietitian can take 2 hours no doctor can 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 do that okay because we have a long line of patients always so um and the way nutritionist dietitians does it is uh, they they look in they look at you as a whole person right um they ask you what your uh lifestyle is no and they have very stringent formulas to follow to compute for the calories uh how much food to eat how much grams yeah very technical um the beauty there, the beauty of their craft is there's a di- clear direction on what you do. It's a very clear direction. However, it's a double-edged sword because what if there's a shortage of, for example, the, the nutritionist told you, okay, on Friday, you have to eat corn or on Friday, you have to eat uh, onions, but there's no onions. That, there lies the problem because it's too rigid. Okay. So um my answer to this is the same as what Chen uh told you. Um it would really be better if uh onkos, no, the other actually not just onkos, but other doctors, if they want their patient to have some sort of uh nutritional intervention, refer them first to integrative doctors or uh lifestyle medicine doctors. So the lifestyle medicine doctor or integrative medicine doctor can prescribe, can create a nutrition prescription to send to the nutritionist. Yes. So yes. There, the nutritionist, the nutritionist would have a clear guide, uh, clear yes, guideline. Yes. Strategy. What, yes, strategy and approach, no, what to prescribe you and what not to prescribe you. Because I've seen nutritionists who prescribe um foods that are prohibited for cancer patients. They because didn't know that is yeah, because yes. they're just counting the calories, the vitamins, the minerals. Yes, very technical. Yes, yes, yes very technical. So, um, they do know a basic, uh, say, uh, a basic knowledge on how food interacts in the body, how food, um, yeah, uh, what does what food does to the body, you no. Know? But of course, when it comes to disease level, mechanism of action, biochemistry, um, I just don't know if they would have that. Uh, knowledge because you need a doctor, you need a medical degree for that to to have a general understanding and take note of the term, ah, just to have a general understanding, okay? Because even us doctors, we don't understand these things um all the time. Yeah, because it's too complex. <laughs> yeah, so there are a lot of studies uh, that we have to read and read and read to confirm the stu- the finding of the previous study that we we just read. Uh, two nights ago and uh, a night ago, so um, pretty complex, no? So yeah, um, it would st- the, so the way you would have to approach this is say for example your uncle did not um tell you to go see a nutritionist or a dietitian, but uh you yourself or, or your uncle told you told you to eat everything, no? So you yourself understands that hey, it's not true that I can eat everything. There's something wrong. So first thing that you have to go to is a lifestyle medicine doctor or an integrative medicine doctor because that doctor would have a general would have a good understanding of nutrition on what food does to the body and what food does to the disease itself. Okay, then from there, um, but at least me, what I do is I create a nutrition prescription. I give you a general guideline of what to eat, what not to eat. From there, I leave it to the patient because it's flexible. But if you want to have a clear guideline of what to eat on Monday, Wednesday, Friday throughout the week, then a nutritionist would be uh, uh would be uh would be the next choice. Okay, so you have a fixed calories per per week. <laughs> and uh the the okay the last one which I actually think is the best one is actually to go and see a Chinese medicine doctor. I'm actually trying to persuade Doctor Johnson to go down the road of a TCM. <laughs> Yeah, because they will actually diagnose uh, what is causing your cancer. Actually, we're very interesting, Doc. You know, in Chinese medicine, there's no such thing as cancer. And they don't actually have that term. Um, it's, it's an extreme 
uh, it's an extreme dysfunction of your entire body system. So they will just try to use nutrition herbs, acupuncture, or whatever modalities to try to bring you back to balance, right? Uh, and that's how they treat cancer. Um, cancer is an extreme, uh, what's that called? Actually, it's extreme stagnation, right? So they will try to do things to, to help you uh, uh, to correct that. But uh, Jen, I noticed we are talking a lot about nutrition today, but the, uh, there are a lot of questions about cancer. So Doc, can we go on like machine gun mode and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Okay. okay. There's lots of questions from Facebook. Next question from Ligak Carino. Post-treatment chemo, radiation, and brachy, but still in pain. Is it okay to take pain reliever while on PPARS treatment? Yes, definitely. Um, if you need the pain reliever, go and take it. Don't um bask under. No need to pain. be a hero. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no need to be a hero. Yes, that's the correct term. So um yeah uh, go and take your pain reliever it's fine no if you want to know which pain relievers would uh most likely work for you uh you have to come and see me okay next okay okay next from Enrique Castillo da Tugan is PPARS can cure HCC what's this? what's HCC? HCC HCC is hepatocellular carcinoma that's okay. liver cancer. Uh, okay, let me explain first how liver cancer um, comes about. No? There are two reasons. One is liver cirrhosis. Mm. Liver cirrhosis can come from uh, fatty liver disease or uh, viral hepatitis. Viral hepatitis is an infection of the liver. Now, um, viral hepatitis, if you get infected of this, no, you can develop liver cancer, but... Um, okay, let me explain no? uh, again from the start. Okay, how does liver cancer come about okay so from a healthy liver okay if your liver uh, goes into fatty liver so if the liver gets infiltrated with fat it can get inflamed once it gets inflamed okay it can develop scarring once it gets scarred no once the scarring is diffused already it's all over the place so that is when you go into liver cirrhosis so liver cirrhosis patients uh chances are if you live long enough you will develop liver cancer okay the other one all right so from a healthy liver what if you got infected with viral hepatitis if you got infected with viral hepatitis you you can develop um liver cancer immediately without going into liver cirrhosis but the general trend is once you get infected with viral hepatitis the liver will get inflamed then it will develop cirrhosis it will develop scarring go into cirrhosis then you develop uh, liver cancer later on. So, liver cancer almost always happens in the context of liver cirrhosis. Okay? Once you have liver cirrhosis, it's not curable anymore. Okay? Because you destroyed the tissue. You you just kill off the liver, the liver cells. The solution to liver cirrhosis is liver transplant. Okay? So, to address to answer the question, can PPARS cure uh, liver cancer? What I know right now is it cannot. Actually, there's no medication that can cure liver cancer. The main type of treatment for liver cancer is surgery. But there is a limit. No, there's a limit. If the tumor is beyond 2 cm, uh yeah, it's yeah. If the tumor is beyond 2 cm, larger than 2 centimeters already. Uh, chances are the doctor will not be able to resect it already because the doctor would have to remove a very big part of the liver. And if the liver is cirrhotic, that even brings in more problem because you can die of... Uh, no, no, no. You can um, not die, no, but the liver function might not be enough to make sure that you live. Yeah, because the liver will now be too small. Okay, and it is cirrhotic already. So that's the problem with liver cancer. So for liver cancer, um, just what I have um said no um in, in the lecture that I did uh on Saturday, liver cancer patients have very good survival rates only if the tumor was resected early on. However, however, even if you resect the tumor, if you, if you remove the tumor, if the liver is cirrhotic already. Chances are later on the liver will develop a new tumor. 
So, I mean, uh, I got this from a first, first hand in the sense that a acquaintance of mine, just now I said, had an inflammation of the liver, didn't do anything about it. And it's very shocking how much his body degraded. He was really like the one of those when you watch the Hollywood movies, mummy, you know, literally just skin and bones. Mm -hmm. Mm, like that it was just so amazingly uh horrifying actually so to every viewer out there take care of your liver you know in chinese medicine kidney and liver one of the two most important organs uh to maintain your health obviously if your heart stops you die your brain stops your, your brain dead right but apart from that the liver and the kidney very very important organs do take care of them people people can be very good to rehabilitate uh before your liver reaches extreme stage of uh, cirrhosis, right? So while you can still do something about it, please quickly do something about it. The liver is also another crazily amazing organ. You can cut the liver. Uh, I remember one patient of ours cut one third of his liver. I think in less than in six months or something like that, it, it grew all the way back. Re liver is incredible in the, its ability re to regenerate. However, if something that can regenerate so much actually fails, when you have liver cirrhosis that that just goes to show how much abuse the liver has taken and that's when when it fails it will fail uh so this is why the liver is an amazing organ it can regenerate so take good care of it right even when you abuse it a little or abuse it quite a lot if you take good care of it it regenerates but if you cross a particular point of no return then you know it's very very difficult yeah, pipa powder, very good for liver aid. It is a fantastic liver aid. How we know? <laughs> very simple. Okay, don't try this because this is a bad way to test it. You can drink a whole bottle of tandoi, take pipa powder extract, and tomorrow you won't have a hangover. That's how powerful of a liver aid it is. But that's a terrible way to prove that pipa is a good liver aid. Don't drink a whole bottle of tandoi by yourself, okay? It's not healthy. It'll give you liver problems, okay? Yeah. Okay, guys, beware, huh? Okay, next question coming from Mary Jane Alonso. Thickened endometrium with multiple endometrial polyp is, is a serious disease? Thickened endometrium with... Uh, multiple uh, endometrial polyp. Ah, uh, it's not. It's not. A uh, simple solution to that, manage your hormonal imbalance then uh, that's probably metabolic, no? So PPARS can help there. But uh, there are other things that we have to do to you, you know, or give you supplements, no? Um, uh, mostly. Then um, to address it immediately, no? To give you the, the solution immediately, that's going to be dilatation and curetage. Your OB would have to um, remove the polyps. Uh, yeah, through dilatation and curettage. That's called raspa in Tagalog. Okay, but the underlying hormonal imbalance has to be corrected, of course. Mm. So that, no, that's the uh, reason why more and more people have all these poly polycystic um, you know, syndromes, right? Because more because of our diet, our, our, hormone, our hormones are also our whack, right? Yeah, our, especially dairy. Yeah, okay, there you go, right? Uh, so this is the case, huh? Alright, next next. Okay, next question a few more from Catherine. Uh, we we will save the rest for next next week. Okay, is thyroid nodule cancer? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, thyroid nodules are mostly benign, but of course, uh, thyroid nodules can become cancer. No, at a very rare rate. No, it's a uh, the rate is very small. So this you we would have to monitor. Okay, um, but. Thyroid nodules, we have had, uh, I have had a few patients already previously who I have given um, PPARS. Um, yeah, they, it went away. It was initially scheduled for biopsy, but the nodule went away, so it was not biopsied at all by her doctor. Uh, this patient was in the US, actually. <laughs> wow, so fantastic, right? So you heard it from Dr. Jansen. I think this, this thing about nodules and growth uh, in our day and age is going to be more and more common because more and more of us go for scans compared to our grandparents, right? And also our lifestyle is not uh, not that good compared to our grandparents. So we will, uh, we will find uh, these alarming things that happen. I think that one thing good about all of our viewers is that you're all concerned about cancer and you should be. Uh, last week, Dr. Johnson just shared, and again on Saturday, 
cancer just took the number two place in Philippines for as a killer disease. So yeah, it's moving up the ranks. So it is something we should all be concerned about. But again, one very, very exciting news and very positive is most cancer when detected early are almost like 90 over percent treatable. Uh, means you'll be okay. So uh, be concerned, take action. Uh, tell your friends to watch on Thursday, ask their questions, right? And have a consult or start on the protocol. Um, doc, that, oh, let me answer this one. Does people help those with thyroid problems? Uh, yes. For hypothyroid, uh, yeah, take people supplements. For hyperthyroid, please uh, go have a consult with Dr. Johnson. Right? The reason is because for hyperthyroidism, your thyroids are really work, uh, very active, right? So once you take PPARs, the Hexheimer reactions or the what, what the normal layman people call healing crisis, you know, just now Dr. Johnson was sharing his patient actually had cramps and then uh, when a when a mass was uh, pushed out of her, her uterus, she felt better. Okay, so that's like a healing crisis. Your, your body actually is recovering, but that process uh, is painful. So for, for hyperthyroidism, uh, you can end up having very high fevers uh, while your body, when you take PPARs, right? So I think for hyperthyroidism, I would definitely suggest that you go for a consult with Dr. Johnson first so that you will have someone that you can call uh, if, if you start to feel things and then there will be a doctor on call. At least uh, you, you are comfortable sending Doc Johnson a Bible message or his HCS, Beth. Hey, Beth, please tell Doc Johnson, I'm feeling feverish right now, you know, things like that. So yeah, for hyper hyperthyroidism, I would definitely suggest that. But yes, it, it can help. It can really, really help. Okay, we're almost at the end of the webinar. I guess this will be our last question for tonight. Mm. From Cherry Love Villoferte, does your product have no approved therapeutic claims? Because this statement discourages me from trying supplements for anything, especially for diseases like cancer and other chronic diseases. Okay, I love this question. Very, very good question. Okay, very, very good question. <clears throat> Why do so many supplements... And people who share supplements talk as if the supplement can have a therapeutic claim, but yet they're on the label of every product of supplements in Philippines, there's this word down there, no therapeutic claims. Isn't this like a direct contradiction? All right. Number one, the way it is phrased, only drugs can make therapeutic claims. Have you ever seen a non-drug make therapeutic claims? Only exceptions. So it's almost by, almost by textbook definition what therapeutic claim means in general in the Philippines. It's a, it's a description that only drugs can use. Let me ask you this question. Is what, can water make therapeutic claims? Water cannot make therapeutic claims. <laughs> right? It, it can't. Literally, only drugs can make therapeutic claims. That's why all non-drug products cannot make therapeutic claims. In Singapore, we have... Uh... Wait, wait. Is the live video ended? Is it... Are we still on? Just is, is it, we're still on. Okay, it's just my Facebook. All right. Okay, so let me give you a... a even in Singapore, non-drugs cannot make therapeutic claims. Let me ask you this. All right. But Singapore says this. If, but we don't have a no therapeutic claim on our label. Uh, what Singapore does is that you can make compo nutritional components can make therapeutic claims. You cannot say, what's the brand? Of, what's the most famous brand of vitamin C in Philippines? I know there's, one, there's a helmet. A kid wears an orange helmet. <laughs> Very cute. Uh, uh. What's that? Brand. Anybody knows? You know, there's a kid that wears an orange helmet. Those of you who have kids. Okay, anyway. Is that potency or Celine? Yeah. I think it's Celine. Celine, Celine right? Kids. The kid with an uh, orange Vitamin helmet. Vitamin C. Yes. Okay, you can't say Celine. You can't say Celine strengthens your immune system. You can't. In Singapore, you can't. But you can say vitamin C strengthens your immune system. It, it, it's very technical. All right? Yeah. So in Singapore, you... Products cannot make uh, therapeutic claims, but nutritional content can. So you can say that the nutritional content in your product 
can make therapeutic claims, but you can't say your product can make therapeutic claims. So these are all very technicalities. So I hope it helps uh, for this particular uh, viewer to answer this question. So I think mo okay, another very interesting question, another very interesting thing, just to help you understand why things are like that and how come, how come, how come we are saying the things that we say. If you study in the US, and I did, in when you take business law, they will teach you this thing. Uh, you can say something is natural if the chemical structure is identical to natural. That means if if your synthetically produced vitamin C has the same chemical structure as a natural vitamin C, you can put the word down there, your vitamin C is natural, but it's not natural, it's synthetically created. But it contain it has the same molecular structure as a natural vitamin C. Technically, you can say it's a natural vitamin C. That's why you even US label laws are kind of uh, not directly, uh, it can be misleading at the same time. So as consumers, we just have to expand our, I guess, uh, knowledge base to understand uh, why things are made this, said this way. Of course, it's not to say that the government or the policies are wrong. There are many crazy products that are harmful, yet people are telling other people that it can make therapeutic claims. And then people take the product hoping to be healed. Instead, they got worse, right? So that's why the government puts policies like this. However, things in uh, things change very quickly. So some governments are, I guess, more conservative and they stick to the traditional definitions. Our product, specifically, let's talk about PIPA agonists, right? Uh, PIPA, uh, PIPA tablets, PIPA extracts. In Taiwan, the Department of Health in Taiwan has allowed PIPA tablets to make therapeutic claims three therapeutic claims, lower blood cholesterol, lower blood sugar, and improve the immune system. It actually make therapeutic claims. Because Taiwan has another category of uh, product classification. They have drugs, they have supplements, and then they have approved health supplements. So there is a special category of supplements called health supplements. They have to go through the same kind of uh, testing like drugs. They have to have the journals published internationally, peer reviewed internationally. They have to do clinical research uh, and publish it in order to make those claims. So uh, our PIPAR tablets actually have these claims. Okay? So uh, in Philippines, we cannot make therapeutic claims. In Taiwan, we can make therapeutic claims. So to answer your question, right? So we are not the only company that does this right i mean that is restricted this year there are many products out there which are definitely very helpful are actually therapeutic but they cannot make a therapeutic claim i think in philippines even vitamin c cannot make a therapeutic claim <laughs> uh because i see brands like fern c or right, there has this no therapeutic claim over there so obviously how can we say vitamin c has no therapeutic effect right dr johnson was just talking about iv a vitamin c drip to, to treat cancer so again uh, it's not again. It's not saying that the 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 statements, the policy is wrong. It's just that this is a rather complicated uh issue, and every country actually deals with it slightly differently. Yet the very same products in different countries have different type of allowed things that they are allowed to do and say. So, but one thing doesn't change, right? The product is still the same product, right? The effect it has, regardless of whether the the way it's worded. It's still the same effect on a human being when you take it, right? But yeah, on different in different countries, you can only say certain things. So this is something as a consumer, you just have to grow um, in knowledge. And this is why Simply Nature takes the extra effort to do wow. things like test our products with chemotherapy drugs, uh, to do things like have uh, qualified uh, experts like Dr. Johnson, Dr. Jimmy, uh, all the doctors that prescribe our products. And, you know, we notice that we don't sell our products through network marketing or anything like that. We only sell them through doctors. We don't even have retailers. We, on, we only distribute through doctors or you buy directly from us on our, on our last mall. And we don't even, you will notice you can't even yeah. buy online uh, PPAS from other places because we take it very, very seriously because our products are used by many times uh, sick patients. So we don't want, we want to make sure that it's all distributed correctly. 
find people who are qualified to the best that ability that we can do so, right? Yeah. I hope that answers your question. That's a very tricky question, huh? Yeah. But don't you, don't you think that I've said something that is worth thinking about? Uh, in, in Philippines, vitamin C has that label, no approved therapeutic claim. Yet people are sharing, <laughs> uh, going for treatment using uh, IV drips and things like that. Uh, how come uh, Lagundi can make therapeutic claim, but Malongai cannot? For a very simple reason, Lagundi was the, the Pasquale founder, actually had a special project in the early days with DOH, which wanted to support locally uh unique, uh locally uniquely developed uh nutraceuticals. That's why Lagundi is an exception, right? Pasquale Lagundi is actually S cough. S cough can be used to treat cough, but it's a non-drug, <laughs> right? Uh, there's a history behind it because uh, the founder of Pasquale um, actually worked with DOH as a pilot program. So again, you see, uh, there's a lot of history, a lot of details. But again, I want to say to everyone, if you see a product that says no therapeutic claim, please be skeptical and be careful. Don't use it as therapy. Uh, that's why we have our program like this to, to be able to answer your question. If you are using a supplement to treat a disease, you got to make sure the person that is selling you the supplement or recommending you the supplement can answer your questions, right? We are confident because, you see, Dr. Johnson can tell you all about your chemotherapy drug, about all these things. So we know that our doctors know what they're doing. And that's how you, you decide which supplements you want to use as part of your uh, fight against cancer and which ones you really still have to do a lot more research before you, you use it. I hope uh, that helps you. Yeah, if that does help you, please uh, type it in the chat so that I know that I didn't spend five minutes for nothing. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very yeah. This is... Uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Say something. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, um, okay. I'll answer the question no, about no approved therapeutic claims and I'll go straight to my parting words, okay? Okay. Right, no. Yeah, because uh, it's getting late. So, the no, ap no approved... Ah, okay. So, everyone, no? If you have an extra extra device, go and ask your favorite doctor. No, ask Doctor Google what does no approved therapeutic claims mean. If you type that in on in your Google search, you should get no this definition. Okay, so we have two, uh, one from Google itself and another one from Generative AI. Okay, so let let me just read it out for you. No, the one uh, from Google. So, no approved therapeutic claims mean that. Um, the product is not approved. No, it's not a drug. It's not approved by FDA to be used in any form of therapy and treatment of disease. Okay? Let me say that again. The product is not a drug. It is not authorized by the FDA. What does FDA mean? It's the Food and Drug Authority. What do they regulate? They regulate product. Are they doctors? They are not doctors. No, sometimes no. I don't think anybody in the FDA are even MDs. They regulate products. What for? It's to protect the public from companies that intentionally mislead the public to mm -hmm. sell their product. That's why the no approved therapeutic claim label is mandated by the government. If the product is not a drug, it's placed on that. Uh, the, the label, that, that word, that phrase is placed on the product. But does it mean that the product does not work therapeutically? No. It works. Okay? I'll give you an example. Let's go back to Shen's example of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Vitamin C uh, is a natural yeah. molecule. Okay? It's, it's everywhere. Okay? Yeah, it's even inside our body. <laughs> but it is used as a treatment, as a cure for scurvy. Yeah, scurvy. It's a cure. It's a treatment and cure for scurvy. Yeah. It Medical is a treatment condition. for scurvy. Okay? So, if a vitamin C supplement has a, lab, has a label, no approved therapeutic claim, does it mean that it does not cure scurvy anymore? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it is still able to cure scurvy. Okay? That's uh, what it means. So, um... It does, so me, as a, in my point of view, no, as a medical doctor, I don't even take a look at the no-approved therapeutic claims label anymore. 
I don't even care about that. What I care is the ingredients inside the the product, and if the if what the company is claiming is true. Okay, if it is biased or not, yeah, that's what I uh that that's what's important for me. Okay, because we use a lot of uh supplements, herbal supplements right now to to treat diseases. But you know, if, if they work, no, they work even if they don't, even if they have this label. Okay, it's also true for medications. Okay, let's go to Lagundi. Lagundi is a treatment for cough, but Lagundi is a very bad medication for cough. It still it it rarely works. To be honest, huh? my experience it rarely works. Okay, I never. Really. Tried it. Yeah, it rarely works. Even myself, I have tried taking it. It didn't work. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So even with drug, you no, know, even with even with uh, herbal supplements that that has a therapeutic intent already, sometimes it really doesn't uh work at all. Okay. Um, other medication. Um, for example, paracetamol. Paracetamol is a drug, right? It's for fever. But sometimes, even if you have the fever, even if you have the fever, even if you take paracetamol, you still have the fever. Does it mean that it does it didn't work? Yeah. Okay, so you get this. So the no approved therapeutic claim is for the public Safety. not to be misled by companies who are irresponsible. That's the purpose of that label. Okay, it doesn't mean that the product does not work. All right, remember that. So uh, um, that would be my parting words. Okay, so it's very good uh, that you ask that. No, this is basically to educate the public. No what these terms mean because sometimes these terms can be misleading. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think <laughs> my parting words would be that, you know, uh, thank you. You know, people always share that they learn a lot in the program and this is what me and Dr. Johnson really hope to do and together with Sheila and Jen is that we hope to give you the empowerment to make better decisions for yourself, right? I think that that's important. Um, and we try to be as balanced as possible, right? Uh, Dr. Johnson was very specific, you know. He says the no therapeutic claim is not a reflection really on the product. It's a reflection of FDA's position to want to protect the public, right? So they made a very safe, uh, they made a very safe uh, barrier. As long as you're not a drug, I'm not going to allow you to say, I'm not going to allow you to claim therapeutic claims because people, if you're a lousy company and people believe we, we will have many people in the public will be hurt. Because the truth is, the way a drug is manufactured is a lot more regulated than the way a supplement is manufactured. I actually know how drug companies produce. The variance is 0.01%. They even measure air pressure inside and outside the manufacturer uh, of the corridor to make sure that air pressure can only flow one way uh, from the manufacturing room into the corridor and not the other way so that no germs can go in. Uh, any, any factory that produces a drug cannot produce anything with life enzymes. So you can't do probiotics in a normal drug factory. You can't, right? So there are a lot of regulations in the manufacturing of drugs. But to manufacture dry uh, malangai pills, that is not you don't need an air pressure room. <laughs> so because of all that, right, the government makes the policies uh, in a very, very uh, con uh, very conservative manner to protect the general public. So, but for whether a product works or not, you have to do more research. Uh, you must be, the people sharing the product must be able to show you evidence, must be able to answer your questions in an intelligent manner, a manner that makes sense. And uh, that is why we're here uh, tonight. And thank you for staying all the way until 9-11. Wow. Still a very high uh, number of crowd. And I hope that you got tonight was an interesting night, uh, especially with this final closing topic. And uh, for those of you who have questions uh, that we didn't answer, next Thursday, we'll be here to answer. Oh, Doc, next Thursday, I'm in Japan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I will try to come from, I will come and do the AMA from Japan. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to Japan. All right. So uh, I'll see you guys next week from Japan, hopefully. All right. Thank you, everyone.
All right. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. So if <laughs> I can still see a lot of questions coming up and more follow-up questions, don't worry, we will answer each of your questions next webinar or via direct message. We hope to see you again in our future webinars to come. Same day, same time, every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. For next week, we will discover the link between sugar and cancer growth. So thank you once again for watching Simply Nature webinar powered by SMG or Simply Healed Medical Group because your curiosity about your health condition and your victory over cancer and metabolic diseases is what keeps us going. Here in Simply Nature, we are always with you from start to healing. Thank you everyone. Good night and God bless you all.